The Resident premiered in January 2018 and has so far provided us with five seasons of hospital drama. The show was originally pitched to networks as The City, but eventually morphed into The Resident. The show has received some criticism. However, with USA Today rating the show as 0.5 out of 4 stars, pretty brutal. Today we're looking at some of the best and worst characters from the show, so stay there. First up, we're looking at a character loathed by fans. We're not sure if TV fans have ever hated a character as much as the Resident fans have hated neurosurgeon Barrett Kane. Actor Morris Chestnut plays the role with gusto and is fantastic in his role as the Doc. He is really believable in the role and has had most fans hating him since the first season. A positive, we think. During the first couple of seasons, we weren't sure if Barrett was an all-out bad guy or if we were going to see some character growth and have the character redeem himself. In earlier episodes, Kane seemingly had most of the power, but by the later seasons, we found that it was Logan who had the power and control over the former college football player. He has done some horrible things at times, but also showed a soft side throughout, especially with Justine. And when the superbug broke out, he showed signs of having a conscious side somewhere in there. We thought we had our fill of Kane, but he has stayed a constant in the show, and we see him carry on with his behavior as the season progresses. Next up, we're looking at one of the show's best love, so stay with us. Chief of Surgery and later CEO, Chastain Park Memorial, Randolph Bell is one of the show's good guys. He is demoted from both positions by the time we arrive at Season 3 by Red Rock, and starts his own talk show, called Ring the Bell. Played by Bruce Greenwood, Randolph himself has a medical condition which seems to be affecting his surgical performance, which is obviously a danger to his patients. At first, it appears his reputation is more important important to him than the lives of his patients, but by the later seasons, he becomes a better person and even forms friendships with the other members of the staff at Chasting, most notably with Dr. Kit Foss, who we see finally dating in Season 5. The Doc's continued growth has been great to see and has made him one of the best characters of the whole series. Throughout Season 3, he was officially one of Conrad's allies, and one of the biggest advocates for the hospital against Red Rock and Kane. It was great to see him making a stand for what he believed in. Being demoted from his position as CEO was one of the best things to happen to Bell, but his shift to Superstar Surgeon and host of his own medical series was the best. What do you think of Dr. Bell's growth from the beginning of the show? Let us know below. Another of the good guys next. Malcolm Jamal Warner portrays August Jeremiah, AJ the Raptor Austin, a triple board cardiothoracic general and trauma surgeon who joins Chastain Park Memorial Hospital at the behest of Dr. Bell and Okafor. AJ is often volatile, dramatic, irreverent, and even sometimes abusive, but it is also kind-hearted and caring, one of the reasons why we love him so much. Keeping his moods in check whilst letting his obvious medical talents flourish is a big task for Austin over the 47 episodes he appears in. He evolved into a lovable teddy bear of a character who inserted himself into the core group, and he has had an intriguing arc all the way through the show, and is definitely one of the many highlights. Current CEO Kit Voss up next, so stick around! Contain spoilers! A fan favorite since joining the show on Season 2, Jane Leaves plays orthopedic surgeon and latterly CEO Kit Voss. In the latest episode of the show, which aired this month, we see a glimpse of the future as the show takes us three years down the line. We find out that Kit is still CEO at Chastain, and she is still in a relationship with Belle. Hooray! Their scenes together gave you all the feelings early on in the show. So as the series progresses, and especially in season 3 when Randolph was supporting her through Derek's diagnosis and near death, you just wanted them to kiss, right? What do you think of their relationship? Do you like the fact that they have eventually gotten together? Next up, a character that we started off not particularly liking, but who redeemed himself as the series progressed. So stay tuned. After initially refusing to donate his kidney to Jessica due to a fear of dying himself, Kyle changes his mind and undergoes the operation. However, his anesthesiologist just turns out to be a drug addict who has an overdose reaction in the operating room, resulting in her dislodging Kyle's vent as she falls and then accidentally cutting one of his arteries. Nick and Conrad manage to stabilize Kyle after the anesthesiologist horror show, though he is forced to undergo a tracheotomy. The transplant is finished and Jesse's body accepts Kyle's kidney, though she has sustained a lot of damage and she's obviously very sick. Later, either Kyle or Jesse dies, despite Conrad's best efforts. We later find out that it's Jesse who passes, unfortunately, despite Kyle's heroic efforts. Next up, a divisive character on the show, so you will have to make up your own mind about this one. Dr. Conrad Hawkins is sometimes harsh, but often brilliant and always cocky senior resident who supervises an idealistic young doctor, Dr. Devin Pravish, on his first day. He gives a great representation of all the good and bad in modern day hospital practices. He is an extremely intense man and is shown to be very tough on the residents under him, but only so they can learn the practicality of being a doctor. This is shown from the off in the very first episode, when he brings down Dr. Pravish down to earth with a severe bump by remarking that's just because he looks the part. It does not mean he is a doctor. Matsukri's intensity in the role is great. It's probably influenced by his character serving time as a medic on the battlefields of Afghanistan. However, Hawkins obviously cares for the patients he has and the lives of the other characters in the show, and he has no problem doing the right thing, in spite of what might happen because of it. Despite
despite his arrogance, he can often be a kind and engaging guy, which can be quite divisive as we have mentioned. What do you think of Dr. Conrad? Let us know below. Up next, we're talking about all things Nick, so stay with us. Nicolette Nevin, known lovingly as Nick, is a nurse who runs the hospital floor and appears to be far too qualified for the role she assumes. She has an on and off relationship with Conrad, who we talked about earlier, and always tries to go the extra mile and do the right thing for her patients. Her mother died when she was 13, and her sister was a former drug addict, but has now been sober for a year, thankfully. And we got to learn more about her throughout the season with information we learned about her past with Conrad and her relationship with Kyle and Jesse. We also learned she has panic disorder. She has overcome a lot and is going through a lot. She has overcome a lot and is going through a lot, and it should have made her more endearing. However, she grew increasingly more annoying as the earlier seasons progressed. She recovers her image in the later seasons and brings a human side to the character when she tells Conrad, you know it's okay to talk about things other than patients and medicine. We can talk about our lives, not a sign of weakness. You get that, right? We think Nick developed into one of the show's good guys. What do you think about Nurse Nevin? Let us know. Dr. Okafor up next. Don't go anywhere. We saw the last of Dr. Mina Okafor in season four, unfortunately, as we like how blunt she can sometimes be. Mina, whose two sisters we learned died in a house fire when she was younger, is an excellent surgeon, but can sometimes come across as quite arrogant. She can also seem quite distant when it comes to relationships, as Micah Stevens finds out. What do you think of Dr. Okafor? Next up, a popular character from season two. Julianne Booth, played by Jenna Dewan, is an intelligent and sophisticated medical device rep with an endearing ability to connect with just about anybody. We love her warmth, beauty, and charisma, which makes her great at the job she loves. A former dancer, Julian got her life back with the help of a medical device. Understandably, she's now passionate about helping others do the same and has chosen to make it her life work. What are your thoughts on The Residents' five seasons so far? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thanks for tuning in and be sure to join us next time. Bye, guys!